what you're talking about. I know God hears me. God hears my mama, my daddy, my children, and everything because we give our tithes. But that's another subject matter altogether. But when you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, look what the Bible says. It says, but the natural man does not accept the things of the Spirit of God. Let me stop right there. First part of the verse. The natural man does not accept the things of the Spirit of God. I just told you that God doesn't hear sinners. Now, if you're saying, I don't like what you just said, Pastor John. I know God hears me. If you're sitting up there and you're a pastor, and you told your people that God hears your prayers, all you have to do is come to Him regardless. Wait a minute. You was out nightclubbing last night, going out with another man's wife? Wait a minute. You was out there nightclubbing, acting like the whore that you are, trying to get your thrill on Blueberry Hill? The natural man does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. What's foolishness to him? What I'm saying is foolishness unto the natural man. The natural man, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, is a man that doesn't know God. Is a man that's alienated from God by his personal sin. And he said it's foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them, that is, the things of God, because they are spiritually appraised. In other words, what that words mean is that they are spiritually being examined by God and found wanting. That's very important. So don't think that because of who you are, who your family name is, and everything like that, that God necessarily hears you. That's not necessarily so. I'd also like to share another important scripture with you, and that would be uh, Romans Chapter 3, verse 11b. Go there with me. Romans chapter 3, verse 11b. The second part of that verse, it says, There is none who seeks for God. Not even me. I'm not seeking for God. Nobody in their natural state can seek for God. So when you think, well... I can seek for God. I seek Him all the time. No, you can't. The Bible makes it perfectly clear that no one is seeking for God. Uh, not even you. And so I think that very important for us to follow God's Word that way. Now, since you have your format there, um, I'd like you to start with number one. Dr. Bach says that he stated that we are, speaking of human beings, here's your fill in. That we are living corpses, transformed by God, made alive. You see, salvation is that we're the night of the living dead, made alive. I want that to sink in. Before Jesus Christ comes in and saves us, we are like walking dead men. Made alive by Christ. We didn't even deserve salvation. But God has made us alive. So we are living corpses. We are dead men walking. Before Christ comes into our life. Transformed by God. And made alive. He also said number two. He said that we are rego associates. In a new and high position. That's what that scripture in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 10 says. We're regal associates. Regal, you think of something royal and high majestically because of the death that Christ died on Calvary. Then we are associated with Christ. We are his regal associates in a new and high position. We no longer live in that lowly, sinful form. See, that's what Christianity is all about. All these books and everything here in my library, that doesn't make me right with God. It's how I live according to the will of God in my life. Now, number three, we get into the definition of grace. When it speaks about grace, because in Ephesians um, chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, it says, For by grace you have been saved. Well, grace is God's 
gift. God's gift. Uh, it is a treasure. And that's what we found in verse 10 of Ephesians chapter 2. That we are his treasure. In other words, we are his workmanship or his poems. We are his masterpieces. We're something, something very special that God has put together. We Christians. That's why at times we appear to be kind of weird. We don't go along with the status quo. We are different from a lot of people. We Christians not only have studied an awful lot, we pray an awful lot, and God's Spirit changes us every day and makes us more and more like Christ less and less like ourselves. This is who we are. Number four. We can't earn salvation. We cannot earn salvation. Why? Because it's a gift received from God Himself. In other words, we can't work our way and be saved. It's not through church works. It's not through doing things. It's not through knowing Pastor John. It's not through any of those things that you give. We're saved because God has determined. And I hope that that doesn't bother you when you hear that you can't do anything to earn your salvation. You just can't. Then that would mean that salvation is of you. That you are the cause and the effect. And don't we witness too much of that in our churches these days? Well, I know I'm saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost because of what I do, the amount of money that I have, the pastor is my husband, and oh, so much other foolish nonsense that people speak in church. It's crazy. So it's a gift received from God Himself. What are the benefits of salvation? Let's get into that. Well, the benefits of salvation, we have some scriptures. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 through 14. Let's go back to the book of Ephesians. We were there earlier. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 through 14. A lot of verses, but I want to read them all to you, share them all with you, because it's important that we get the right kind of idea of what the Bible is saying. I kind of like this setup here because when I get to certain verses in reading this, I'm going to emphasize them on the screen, and if I emphasize these verses on the screen, I would ask that you would document them, and uh, that's why I'm, you know, I'm not going to be operating the camera going up and back and forth and moving around too much. This is a teaching DVD series of Basics of the Faith. And I want it to be exactly that. All right, Ephesians chapter 1, starting with verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Ephesians 1 and 3. How many blessings have Christ given you since you've been saved? 